Hello Virgo. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoincha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. Okay, so some of you may have been in a relationship in the past. This could also be current. Others of you, this could be a situationship that you find yourselves in. Also, for those of you who have just met this person, wow, well, yep, who've met this person, you feel there's a special connection, and that is a past life connection. That's probably really confusing right now. Because the feelings and emotions in these type of connections are very intense. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that we need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. So, we have a few cards here that are a bit on the dark side in the sense that the feelings and emotions are very deep. Very gloomy, very sad, upsetting. Here we have illness, wellness, boundaries, and fear. Smack dab in the middle of the deck. So it really does seem, or the spread rather, it really does seem as if there's complications around this connection. First card, the strongest, we have here shape-shifting followed by illness, wellness. Then we have mystery, surrender, mothering, boundaries, fear, abundance, then we have justice under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Virgo, sometimes I'm busy and sometimes when I'm not, I think about you. No matter where I am, no matter where I go, what I do, who I'm with, something happens and I always end up thinking about you. I have seen this happen for a very long time. And there's a part of me that truly does yearn for you. It longs for you. Even though I'm on the path in a different direction, my mind, my heart is turned towards you. I am torn. I just don't know what to do. A part of me has a life, a different way of thinking. But then there's another part of me that feels that you are my life. You're my love. And I don't want to lose you. You may wonder why there's boundaries, and it's because my circumstances are like that. My circumstances keep me at a distance. I am unable to be myself, to do the things that I really want to do. Because there are things that are weighing me down. Problems that prevent me, obstacles, hindrances that prevent me from being with you the way that you would like me to. These are responsibilities, burdens, restrictions, constraints, trauma, emotional trauma, things that I have done that are haunting me still. And so I stay below the surface of this water in the sense of desperation, despair, sometimes even depression, because I just can't release myself from that. 
it keeps weighing me down. Certain things I have experienced in this connection that are very different, very unique, and there's a part of me that feels now very strongly that this is a spiritual connection. The spiritual connection that I feel that exists, it's been there for a while now. I question the universe. I question the heavens. Why is it that you're in my life? Why now? Why not before and why not long ago? When I have other responsibilities and other things going on in my life, why now? Why not later? Why not long ago? I feel in this connection no matter what happens, there's this part of me that's always stuck with you, and you're stuck with me. There's this bond, this spiritual connection where I feel as if I've known you from before, and I feel so comfortable with you. You seem familiar, and everything that you say and do, I love hearing your voice. I love being in your presence. Sometimes when you're not there, I obsess over you and it's as if I can smell your scent. I can feel your presence near me, but you're not really there. And in my dreams, everything seems so real. Everything that has happened, everything that could happen. There's a part of me now that has surrendered to you. If you lead, I will follow. I have surrendered my mind, my heart, and my body to you. There's also a part of me that feels as if I belong to you and you belong to me. Certain things I've noticed over the time that I've known you. You are someone who is very nurturing, caring, protecting, and loving. A lot of compassion, but I see that you have unconditional love for those around you. You have so much love to give, and it's soft and gentle and nurturing. It is very nourishing for those that are able to experience that. But I've put up boundaries, and I had to. Because of the lack of attention I've been giving you, because of the lack of communication that we've had, I realized that I can't really go back and change things, no. But I also have an issue where I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do in order to be a better person in this connection. How do I do that? I don't know. I also feel that in this connection, there's this lack of understanding that we have where we're coming from. You are someone who has experienced a lot. And I don't see that. I have not gone through that, and therefore I don't think like you. Yes, we've had our differences. But there are certain things that I can't do, and I have to put a boundary on it, because of my circumstances. And I am afraid, and fearful, and nervous of the type of connection that I have discovered that we have. This connection that I feel that may be a past life connection. The spiritual connection is just too much for me to handle. It's so intense that it actually scares me. And because it scares me, because I don't understand it, I fear it. And that's why I've put up boundaries. Yes, 
the connection is very intense. I can feel your energy sometimes and I know you can feel mine. But handling this, trying to be that person that can tackle this, I find that very complicated. I also feel that in this connection, there's a sense of abundance. I want to be that person who can provide for you, who can be there with you, build something with you. But I feel intimidated because I see that you have moved on and you are much more than what I am. I feel that you deserve better. I feel that you have had more experience than I. You are more settled, even emotionally, than I am. And there's a small part of me that wants to be that individual that can help and be part of this team. But it's a challenge. Overall, I want to make things right. Certain things have happened in this connection where I was just taking and taking and you were just giving and giving. And I realize now that, yes, I was very selfish. It was all just one-sided and I was just thinking about myself the majority of the time. Now I want to change things. I don't want to be that person anymore. I want to make things right and have an equal give and take in this relationship. For now, even though I may be with someone else, even though I may be doing something else, my mind is always turned towards you as well as my heart. And you may wonder why is it that there is distance between us. It's because the circumstances that I'm in, I just cannot release myself from that. I am stuck. I am bound to these responsibilities. And that has taken a toll on this connection. All right, Virgo. Wow. For the majority or a little less than a majority of you, this is a third party situation where we have either another individual in the picture or this could be, the third party could also be um, another issue, like a, a problem that needs to be solved, a project that needs to be solved, taking care of a loved one. Um, using up your time and hanging out with your children during the weekends because you've just been separated or you are with the children and you have that obligation. They're your kids, so you have to be with them. So you sacrifice that attention that you're giving to the other individual. So this is something that is coming up as a third party situation. First card's the strongest. This person is unable to give you, Virgo, time, energy, and effort that you deserve. Now, there's also another thing in this um, reading. The majority of you may be feeling this, but keep in mind we have here the mystery card. For me, that's a past life card. With the past life card, some of you may actually be experiencing this or feeling this on your own. So this could be vice versa. It could be that cross watcher, you're feeling this. Virgo, you're feeling this. Could be maybe both of you are feeling this. Now, What's interesting here is one of the cards where we have fear, and it's directly under the, pa the past life card. Now, why is there fear? Because this is what I call double the love, double the pain. Double the love meaning in a past life there was love, but in this lifetime those instincts are kicking in and they feel it again. There was pain in a past life. In this lifetime there's again, there's pain. It's times two. So it's too much for the human to handle. That's why it's overwhelming. And when it's too overwhelming, people really don't want to deal with it because they don't know how to deal with it. And what do people often do? They just take a break and they take a step back and they put up boundaries. So there's two things here. Three, actually. This person can't give you their time, energy, effort because of a third party situation. This person has obligations and they're stuck 
with the, within the circumstances. Also, this person has this overwhelming urge to actually make things right once and for all. They also feel a little intimidated by you too. So some of you may be um, maybe financially, emotionally, um, or even in relationships, you may be more wise. There could be some wisdom here. You're more educated. You're more rich than this person. But this person feels a little intimidated. Maybe you have, maybe you've had um, a flat or an apartment or a home for a very long time, and this person never did. And now they're trying to have that abundance card that came um, to make money in order to get something like that because they fear that they are not living up to your standards. Even if you don't care. From their point of view, they do want to satisfy you in that way. They don't want to disappoint you. All right. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the Lover's Path Tarot. So with this deck, I have a look at anything that may have happened in the past that caused the problem in the first place. So something happened that caused the issue where things were very sweet, very great, but then things started to change. And this person may have ghosted you, they may have just faded, there may be a lack of communication, whereas before there may have been a lot of communication, but now it's just like breadcrumbing. So we have here the four, I'm also getting the word gaslighting, so somebody here has um, acted in that way. We have here four of coins and balance. So these cards I actually read in the reverse. And this is something that has happened in the past. So I'm going a little bit into the past to see what happened. And the first set of cards that we just had, that is the current situation, um, how the, the uh, connection is between the both of you currently and what that person's feeling for you currently. So this is a little bit in the past. We have here the four of coins. This talks about how this individual was being miserly with wealth, with talents. Conversely, being an overly generous spendthrift, the need to conserve and protect their resources. Oh, interesting. So you remember how we just had the abundance card and we had the fear card. One of the issues is that this person's not really, um, and this is a general love reading, okay? This person doesn't seem to be very well um they're not good at saving money. They spend money. This person could be spending more than they earn. And that's obviously a problem. So that's a situation here that has been realized. And that's one of the reasons why you actually ended up getting um, that particular card, the abundance, along with the fear right before it, because they are afraid that they are unable to to be that individual who can save money, who can create and who can settle and who can buy many things. This is something that they've, this is something that they felt um, intimidated about back then. So they didn't feel that they could have done this. Why? Because they had a habit of spending money. They're just not good at saving it. Here we also have balance. Either way, the point here is, is that money was a problem in this connection materialistic gain, anything to do with wanting to just settle down, getting a place together, those type of things. Here we have balance. This talks a lot about imbalance and discomfort. The inability to find peace within themselves or even with others. There was a lack of inspiration because they were unable to find and have a union between the conscious and the unconscious aspects of the psyche. So they were really having difficulties when it came to what type of connection this is and how they can move forward in a harmonious kind of way. They felt that they just couldn't. It wasn't working for them. And they felt discomfort. So at some point in time, they didn't feel comfortable anymore. And it's not because of you. There was something that was happening inside of this person's mind, their, but inside their heart, throughout their experiences, they were trying to keep their distance because they could not find peace, even in their own life, but they could not find peace with other people either. So this is not a you problem, Virgo, this is a them problem. They have some issues here that need to be resolved. 
Now, the illness wellness card can also indicate emotional trauma that you had before. Um, you had that card over here before. So this person may have gone through a lot of emotional trauma. They just haven't gone over it yet. They haven't gotten over it yet. And it still haunts them. So when it's like that, when it actually haunts an individual, they're unable to move forward. And no matter how much money you have, what type of vacation you go on, if you're sad, you're sad right? This is what this person feels. They were upset. It does not matter what the environment is like. If people are celebrating, they may act like it, but deep down inside, they're not happy. So there was an issue here, and they may not have talked to you about it. Whatever the issue is, it seems to me to be more for them feeling not as good, not as good as you feeling inadequate. That's why they felt intimidated. So this is something that has unfortunately inbuilt. It's, it's kind of inbuilt into their personality because this is what they were like when they were with you. Now they're trying to change that as time goes by, but you did have the boundaries card, so they're not even looking into that. They're just like taking a step back and not even dealing with it. So they know there's a spiritual connection, but they are not ready to move forward because they just don't feel confident. All right, let's have a look at the beginner's tarot. So these are any actions, plans, intentions that a person of interest may have or they may take in the future. You also have a peekaboo card here. There you go. Oh, wow, we. <laughs> okay. Wow. Big changes. We have the Four of Cups, Judgment, Magician, Nine of Wands. Then we have the Ten of Pentacles. We have the Ten of Cups. Wow. That is pretty, pretty intense. This is a massive change. This is a huge change. We have here the Four of Cups. So the first card is the strongest. This is the energy that they're in, and they've been in this energy for a long time. They feel that certain things could have been different, but they never really took the opportunity. They never really appreciated what they had. They took many things for granted. They took you for granted. And so they're just kind of sulking over this. They're just being very sad, um, depressed even. And that's probably also why they had the illness wellness, because that talks about a little bit of dis depression, despair. There's various levels of depression, of course. And what's interesting is we have here the judgment. Now, before you had the justice, here with the judgment, they feel that they want to just restart this entire connection. And going forward, they want things to be more transparent, more clear. The truth needs to be spoken. And once it is spoken, what they feel is that this connection can have basically more substance. It can be, it's a richer kind of connection when you have transparency, when you have truth. This is something that they want now. They have realized that this is what they want. And then you have the magician card. So they're going to try to manifest this. They're going to try to make this come true. Whatever is happening in their life, they know that there's certain things that you want, certain things that you need. They're going to try to be that person who can provide you everything just so that they can see you smile and make your heart happy. Here we also have a task. Nine of Wands. So you remember we had the illness wellness card once again, right? That talked a lot about circumstances, responsibilities, problems that this person has to face, certain things that are their circumstances, they just cannot let go of it, right? Well, this specific card, the way it looks to me right now, it does appear that they are starting to think, are there certain things that I can let go of? Is there a responsibility that maybe somebody from the family can take on and I don't have to do that? This person's trying to see what boundaries need to be created and what boundaries can be broken. Certain tasks that need to stay and certain things that they can just let go of. When they do that, it's almost like spring cleaning. 
When they do that, they are able to get rid of certain things, but also allow the new to come in. And they're doing this before they even reach the Ten of Wands, where things get really, really overwhelming. So right now they are overwhelmed, but they're trying to manage it. Very interesting. Now we also have here the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles talks about the intention. This person wants to give you a beautiful home, all the amenities, every single thing that is materialistic that you desire, that you need. They really, really want to give this to you. This is a happy home. This is what they want to give to you. Now, that is tangible. These are tangible assets. This is more of a materialistic gain. But then you also have an absolutely 10 out of 10 card here. The 10 of cups itself is here on stage. <laughs> it is the main focus where this person wants to also have this wish come true and you are their wish come true. They want to have the home, the family, the happiness, picnics, sunshine, daisies, all that stuff. They want to have a happy life, but this talks more about the emotional aspect, everything that they have ever wanted. They want to make it come true and they want it to be like this with the Ten of Cups, where emotionally they're completely satisfied in life, but also materialistically they're completely satisfied in life. You're dealing with somebody here, you may think they're very money-minded, uh, but you are dealing with somebody who values money, and money should be valued, um, because money makes the world go round, and we cannot really get anything in life if we don't have money. So this person either is a little too much into money or they're just trying to make ends meet. But whatever it is, for them, money has value and money for them is important so that the both of you can settle down. And you had the abundance card before, so this is really interesting. And then you had the four of coins, I think, right? So you got a lot of coins here. This person's really thinking about that. So I do see here, Virgo, if you think, you know, this person was really ignoring you and, you know, what the heck was going on, what I'm truly seeing is a theme where they just felt they couldn't give you what it is that you deserved simply because of monetary situation that they were in. So keep that in mind. And also, it also indicates that they were overwhelmed with many other problems and things that they could not let go of. But now, they're a little mature, they've learned a lesson, they're trying to slowly, slowly shave off all that heaviness to see if they can make things a little bit lighter for themselves. And when there's more room, there's more space, they can give that energy to you. All right. So I do see this person reaching out to you, especially for a second chance. However, keep in mind, if they do reach out to you, they may be a little busy. But also remember, the only reason they're busy, it's because they're trying to settle down with you. They're trying to fix some, fix all the things that need fixing. All right, I'm just going to do a quick prayer. All right. These messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. So we have here, ask your angels. So some of you may have also gone through a few things here. And you're wondering what the answers should be. Because you're not really receiving answers. You will very soon. Wow. So here we have a situation. Very interesting. And again, this is, once again, a romantic connection that is spiritually based because this card for me, it is the card that indicates a spiritually based romantic connection. Then we have be assertive. followed by success. And then we have yes. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme here, we have P 
peaceful resolution. So it does appear that certain things in this connection have led to disruption in the heart and the mind. We have here ask your angels. So the angels here are saying that it's important for you to ask. Now we do not worship angels, but we do give them our utmost respect, highest level of respect, and you can contact angels through. Um, and this is the way I do it. This is the only way it works for me. But I pray to Jesus. From Jesus, I get to his father. These angels work for the father. And it's like manager employee situation. Um, within a split second, you are in the energy of the angels, and they need permission to actually help you. So you just give them permission, you just say it, and you tell them what the issues are. What's really interesting about this particular reading right now is right after you ask your angels, you will be noticing signs and synchronicities. It may not happen immediately, but as time goes by, you're going to notice these things. This could be repetitive numbers, certain shapes, cars that are the same looking or colors. Um, this could be a sign on a billboard where the sentence only makes sense to you. This could be a radio that you're listening to and all of a sudden you hear this this song and this phrase in it and it just strikes you to you and you know that that's your song. You know that it's a message for you. It's very strange how these things work, but don't go out looking for it. Let it come to you, okay? Sometimes we dwell too much on it and we ended up, you know, we end up making something out of nothing. And that's us overthinking. So let it be organic. Let it be natural. Let it come to you. We do have here, ask your angels. And when you do receive answers, you are going to have to reconsider certain actions, certain words, certain plans that you had. The key word here is reconsider. So think about it twice. You are going to be in the connection here with your spiritually based romantic partner. This could be your twin flame, your soulmate, your karmic partner, maybe even more, but those are the top three that I've seen that are the most intense. Here we have be assertive. So let them know what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with. We also have here success and then yes. So this is going to be a very successful connection. And yes, things are going to work out. I do see that here. So for the majority of you or whoever you are, if you feel that this is resonating with you, then most likely this part's also going to resonate and things are going to work out great. The overall arching theme here is peaceful resolution. <clears throat> so with peaceful resolution, it does indicate that things were very rough in the beginning. A lot of things were, I'm getting the word hodgepodge. <laughs> um, argumentative, disagreements, not really being on the same page, seeing things differently. However, things are going to change. And that is where you have here the opportunity to be assertive, to not be that person where this person is just going to walk all over you if they have in the past. You're going to be able to speak your mind, to set some healthy boundaries, to let them know what it is that you feel that should comes true in this connection, however you're wanting to be treated in this connection. And we do have here success and yes. What I'm seeing from this um, reading right now is that there's a little bit of waiting time, but there's also this lack of understanding. You guys don't really understand each other that much. I see that there's kind of like a lack of communication. I'm seeing in my mind's eye right now, communicate clearly. So communication, that has to happen. And when it does happen, just talk about the facts. Just talk about what's really happened, what's really bothering you. Do not go on and on and on because people get lost in the details. Keep it short and sweet to the point so that you get the other person to speak. Virgo, that is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. Also, I wanted to just mention that I do past life readings for some of you that are interested. Please have a look on my website, www.asnoinshia.com. Have a look to see if it is available, the past life reading package. If it's not, you can always email me and I can put you on the waiting list. I also wanted to mention on my other channel, Asnoinshia Audio, which is a YouTube channel, the videos are absolutely free. Have a look at 
past life and spiritual connections, that video, also sensually intense spiritual connections. Those two videos are very much applicable to the situation that I'm seeing here in your reading. All right, guys, you all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye now.